on the radio, you can hear all sorts of things. But tonight, you're going to hear uh, something special, something strange, something from paradise. <laughs> Um, excuse me, I think we're trying to begin. <laughs> Psst. Good. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sometimes people are calling up or something, they don't even know it themselves. The scene is stimulated. Man sieht intensiver, the farben werden leuchtender. Auch die Musik wird intensiver erlebt. Es geht durch Mark und Bein. Man kommt in irgendwie eine Märchenwelt. Welcome to Radio River Flow. River Flow, it's a radio show. That was it. Richard, would you like to give us one sentence about the radio show as a narrator intro? Uh, the topic for this uh, 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 show would be physical theater. <laughs> also, uh, yeah. That's a funny topic for a radio show. <laughs> Is it still Radio River? Just watch, watch. Wait, here's physical theater. Watch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Radio River Show. This evening's episode, we're going to be speaking about physical theater. Now, the hosts will do their best not to mess anything up like so many, very many of the previous episodes. So buckle in and be ready for many questions. Thank you and good luck. Yeah. Willkommen bei Radio R River Flow. What? One second, please. <laughs> Is this a good distance for the mic? Now that the piano's not playing? Or did you still little, want it down here? A little bit more. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not moving. That, this, is, this is me for the rest of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I hope I get at least an hour. I mean, I got a lot to say. What are you doing? <lacht> Willkommen bei Radio River Flow Folge 30. Ich bin Adam Allegro, putscht den Putin, der rote Vorhang des Radios. Und bei mir ist wieder mal mein Moderator, der Posamenteur unter den Radiomoderatoren, <lacht> Elektro aus Brot. Und heute haben wir als Gast Peter Sweet und Peter spricht Englisch und deswegen wird es wieder eine englische Sendung. Es tut mir leid für alle, die Deutsch sprechen, aber äh, wir werden von jetzt an eben auf Englisch switchen. So, welcome to Radio River Flow. My name is Adam Allegro Putschdem Putin. We have as a guest tonight Peter Sweet and with me is my co-host Elektro aufs Brot. Yep, good evening. And uh, like you heard, uh, what is the narrator name? Does he have a name? As you heard our narrator uh, before, he, uh, he, we have something new in the show. We have a bell and we have again an audience. So if the audience wants to ask a question, they ring the bell. We test that. Yes, please. How old are you? Next question. <laughs> so you see, it wor <laughs> <laughs> as you see, this works very fine. Uh, our topic this this uh, episode will be physical theater. We have, I think, an expert in physical theater here. And for all you don't know what 
to what this what this is we try to uh, this evening to bring you this begriff nearer do you know the word no. closer begriff uh, oh topic ah yeah to bring you this topic a little bit more near to you to you peter uh, a little bit about uh, your person how old are you <laughs> <laughs> the audience wanted to know <laughs> as you already heard <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, 64, or in English, 46. Auf Deutsch, das heißt 46. Okay. Um, <laughs> where did you grow up? I grew up in Berkeley, California. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What 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 did, did bring My parents you, were hippies. What did bring you to Germany? Uh dance school. Germany is famous for good dancing? Uh no, Austria actually. In, oh. in 2005 I moved to Salzburg to attend the Salzburg Academy of Dance. Ah. The Salzburg Experimental Academy of Dance where a good friend of mine was already studying. And was it kind of ballet dance or yeah ballet and contemporary oh cool um so it was a contemporary school but we did ballet every day and lots how, of other things how old were you when you attended that school i was 28 which is very old to be in dance school which did you what did you do before Wow, getting right into it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things, 28 years worth of stuff. <laughs> um, uh, I, had, I, I had been street performing and making circus shows, new circus shows, and um, studying Alexander Technique. <laughs> okay, and I, I have two questions there. <laughs> how, how did you get to the circus shows? What was... What thrived you that you said, I want to do circus? Well, I did a double major in sociology and cultural anthropology. <laughs> so that's how I became a clown. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> uh, and when I finished, I thought maybe I'll go to graduate school or maybe I'll um, study ergonomics. And then my one of my best friends at the time... Um, lovingly known as the monkey, said, hey, how about we travel around the world? Do you want to travel around the world? And I said, of course. Um, so I guess we got to save some money. And he said, ah, we'll street perform. It'll be great. And I said, well, but we don't know how to street perform. <laughs> he said, that doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. Anybody can do it. We can juggle, right? So we went out on the street and juggled in San Francisco for where they turn the cable cars around for the tourists. So all the tourists wait and watch the cable cars uh -huh. uh, being turned around. And we thought we could be at least as interesting as a mm -hmm. cable car. <laughs> 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 Turns out mostly not, but we did our best. I wanted to ask, how, how, how did that work out for you? Uh, well, we made enough money to buy our plane tickets, so pretty well. And we learned a few things. But... Uh, Yeah, one of my mentors came and saw me uh, in, in my first shows and he watched the show and afterwards he said, okay, Pete, uh, we got to get you funny. <laughs> <laughs> so then he basically like let me stay in his house for a month and listen to all his comedy albums and uh, absorb them until I could. What, what comedy enough. albums did you listen to? Um, Eddie Murphy Raw, um, lots of Bill Hicks, um, oh wow, some other less well-known ones that I forget the names of. Ah, oh, what was it named? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. More, more stuff. He, he was an old performer. He had been in the business already 25 years when we started. And so he had a, a large library of Uh, VHS tapes and comedy LPs and he lived in a warehouse with a bungee trapeze in the living room and about 85 hats on the wall and so 
when he would go out of town, he would give us his house and we would rehearse there and watch all his videos and listen to his albums to try and get some inspiration for how to and take uh, the did next you try steps. to to uh Uh, play like them or to, to like Eddie to Murphy, yeah, to totally. <laughs> 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 yeah, try. Did you try to imitate those? No, actually, it was more. Um, uh, his advice was was very good. Um, I've followed it in many other fields as well. It was basically, if you find the comedy that you love, that makes you laugh the most, that you really uh, resonate with, then. You just listen to it over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. until it seems stupid to listen to it one more time and then listen to it one more time. And eventually the structure and the timing will start to enter your system. And so you, it's not that you'll take their jokes or even their style, but that you'll understand on a some kind of visceral level the, the way that the comedy works. And it worked. I mean... So you learned the timing from that? I don't know. I uh, mean, you yeah. learn from many things. We yeah, also but, just yeah, went okay. out on the street and did lots and hundreds and hundreds of shows until we could make our audience uh, laugh and give us money. Okay. Maybe it's comparable to music. If you like a certain music style and you listen to much of it and you are getting good in it. Is yes. It? Oh. Yeah, it's... it's uh, we, we You get a feeling. Yeah. Oh. Among friends, we call it the... the You shit what you eat technique. <laughs> shit in shit I mean, out. Or, or, or like um, William Burroughs. <laughs> yeah, shit in shit out. Yeah, w William Burroughs talked about this a lot as well. Because you're you're always in the process of re recombination as a as a creative person. So you want to choose your influences. Um, either carefully or wildly, but somehow um, you want to make good choices about what you consume. Mm -hmm. And then at a p certain uh, moment you recognize, okay, this is uh, like serious for me or this is a uh, yeah, well, way we, of living we, I want the, to do. Uh, I'll give the short story. We traveled around the world for a year. Mm -hmm. We did lots of terrible shows that no one would watch <laughs> <laughs> until we could finally do shows that people really enjoy. In some short words, what is the show that no one watches, what no one likes to watch? Well, we thought that we could just go to Australia and do our fantasy show. Okay, the, the act was called Wolf and Monkey. And my partner, David, dressed up, oh, monkey, <laughs> dressed up in a full Beijing opera outfit with makeup like the Monkey King from the Beijing opera. And I dressed as kind of like a Tom Waitsian sort of wolf character, um, wolf archetype with a fedora and the stuff. And then we went out to go do our wolf and monkey juggling show. And uh, in Australia... Well, we we had heard that in Australia they loved art and they loved. Oh, sorry, talk into the mic. Yes, <laughs> um, that in Australia, uh, that basically the streets are paved with gold. Uh, we heard this from a friend of ours who had toured there with Cirque du Soleil, and he said the audiences are amazing. They love circus. They love. They appreciate art. But the street audiences are a little bit different. <laughs> I, we learned later that Australia is absolutely the hardest place to street perform in the world, if you ask most street performers, because there's not a lot of people, and the people are like, yeah, go on, do a trick. <laughs> Almost okay. every street performer there is like has a chainsaw running or is naked or is uh, insulting someone or telling a joke or all yeah. of the above, usually from the top of a tall structure. Yeah. So you finished the tour? Yeah, we finished. Thank you. you, you got to the you end. The, By the, the end, <laughs> mon monkey business. We went to Australia. We figured out how to make a show that would work. We then we went to Indonesia and trained and also performed some there. And then we went to China and studied kung fu in the mountains and performed in a theater in Beijing. And then we went to Europe and started to do street shows there. And then we split the double act. And he went off to go do experimental juggling in a basement studio in berlin called the catacomb and, and i went off to friedrichshaven to play my first festival as a solo act and by the time we got home uh i could make my living as a street performer and we started a circus so what was your solo act about 
Uh, my solo act was a, a rope walking act with fire juggling and ball juggling. Okay. And then you started the circus. Like, what kind of circus did you start? Uh, the circus. Wow, you, there, you know, there's a lot of information in this story. I'm old. <laughs> We okay. could be here for a while. <laughs> um, the circus was called the Dusk Beat Circus, um, and it was a kind of like cool post-apocalyptic dark circus. I wore a top hat and a and a and a coat that we spray painted silver and we smashed a boom box on stage with a sledgehammer that was playing traditional circus music <laughs> <laughs> and uh we were three mus three three musicians and eight acrobats on stage and uh we did a full circus show in theaters we didn't make money really doing that but i was making my living street performing and so we would make theater shows with this circus group Would you say that uh, street performing is cheap sex and theater is love? <laughs> <laughs> let me let me just let me just. Gonna, Did I'm, I understand that yeah, correctly? No, 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 I'm gonna just I'm gonna, I'm gonna warm this up. I would say. Hell no. <laughs> I would definitely not say that. Okay. Um, I'd say there's cheap sex and love everywhere you go in the world. Um, on every stage and every street corner, you can find both. Um, so, you know, you, 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 you try and do one as often as you can. <laughs> I'll let you decide which. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I would say that street performing um, on the real street, just working for tips from strangers with no structure whatsoever, mm. um, is a brutally difficult discipline. And so the people that make their living for that for a long time tend to adapt on some level a survival approach to their art. You have to do what works. Um, and some people manage to also be artists in that situation and find a different voice than uh, the the kind of like most blunt instrument of how to get the audience to be there and laugh and focus and pay. But it's a challenge there because it's very rough environment. So um, the artists that become really wonderful artists on the street tend to be extremely durable if they go other places um but the 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 kind of the sea of people that stay in that scene tend to uh the shows start to look a lot the same because mm -hmm. they're just doing what they can do to make it happen mm -hmm. it's often the, the same point where how you catch people probably well could you tell in general how to catch people on the street <laughs> is it, is it a, well there's there's a scheme there's there's a few uh a few different approaches but the most classic way to get an audience on the street is um play loud music light fire and build your limo which is a large impressive <laughs> metallic object <laughs> so <laughs> you have a yeah, tall unicycle yesterday. or a big uh <laughs> slack rope rig or yeah. a pole or Uh, something big that you build and then you play a loud music that gets attention yeah. um, and you light fire. This is, I'm being very quick. There's lots of other ways too. Some people just stand on a box and talk to people till they have a crowd. But so, uh, funny thing, now now where did you, what, what would you say, where in this path you did, did you enter physical theater and what is what you described right now with the limo stuff. Is that for you also still physical theater? Oof, Because the attention question. is definitely somewhere else. Well, I would say that um, at a certain point, so I have a good friend of me, mine, after I had been performing on the street for about a year, uh, no, two years, and had a very successful street show in terms of I could make a good living with it. I could do big shows and make big hats. And uh, a friend of mine asked me, do you still love it? And I said, yeah. <laughs> 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 and I could tell I was at a kind of breaking point where I, I wasn't um, appreciate, I wasn't kind of 
um, enjoying it as much anymore. I was running the motions. I was doing the thing that I learned how to do that that worked, but I wasn't getting the same uh, excitement. And so I went and took a clown um, workshop at right about that time. Or I guess I had already decided to do the clown workshop, uh, but I went and studied with Avner Eisenberg, who's a wonderful American and clown this what you would say was your first contact with physical theater? I would say so, yeah, or that was my entry point. I mm -hmm. went there, I did two week workshop, and I found a clown character, and I took this character and i I just kind of like threw him into my street show in San Francisco, and I started to instead of do my regular shtick that I figured out to make my show work, I started to play this character, and my show fell apart. <laughs> Explain to the audience what is physical theater, because for us, uh, the 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 topic the topic <laughs> uh, is quite not really new, but quite new. I would say for me, it's brand new. Great. <laughs> yeah, for example. Well, uh, so how would I you mean, describe physical? It's theater? a funny. It's a funny term because, of course, all theater is physical because the artists are there on stage. Um, the actors are also using their body and their voice all the time, but I guess. Um, <clears throat> physical theater that I've studied and that I practice uh, and play with um, I you change the space and also your own state and find the character that you're playing through your body movement so 
if I take a different shape in my body, a different movement quality, it like provokes a different way of feeling and reacting to the world. And mm. from that, I find um, how to how to play. So, Wait, so that is funny because uh, yeah, because in my in my no. head <laughs> in my head pops up another physical theater where uh, uh, the technikerin and I invented a rule at the attention. D do you want do you want to tell about the rule? This for the question in another direction. Um, yes, we went to the attention festival and. Um, There were some shows, and uh, we recognized that when um, in, during or in the shows, um, the the people or the artists are lying on the floor more than half a minute and rolling on the floor and doing strange things on the floor. Um, it's not uh, our kind of. Um, show. We told ourselves to leave the tent. Yes, because we saw so many way abstract <laughs> things. Um, that sounds a lot like contemporary dance to me. <laughs> you, you could have yeah, some and, nice and shows. And that's what was in my head when you uh, described physical theater. Mm, what, okay. What? Well, um, I mean, it's kind of it's a big field. So uh, I'll take an example, um, which would be um say if i if i play um a clown character when i f when i find a, a my clown if i want to play a clown and i go to find the clown that is uh, resonating with me right now i would work in a group and have people observe my movement and then uh, imitate me so I can become aware of my own movement and then I would amplify my own movement. So I would exaggerate uh, or make bigger the way that I walk. Like in uh, like the Ministry of Silly Walks in uh, Monty Python, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> or if you could see like a classic street mime act, um, a mime would watch uh, people walking by and then walk behind them And imitate their walk, mm -hmm. and then the audience would laugh because they they'd see how the how the the person there transforms their state, their movement, and they start they start to see the the other person there being yeah. amplified. So physical theater is, uh, now it sounds for me it's not a new thing. It sounds for me like it is a it's quite a, old it's thing. It's a very old thing, yeah. for But sure. And uh, there's also. Do, um, do you think it lost its popularity, or it's through the years? Um, I no. I mean, I, I think uh, I think categories and labels are tricky. We need them, but they're always. I mean, both you, ha you have a hard incomplete and too restrictive. Yeah, so. you, you have hard <laughs> uh, competitors right now. Hard competitors. Yes. With what in physical theater? Yes. You have uh, YouTube. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if YouTube. Well, this is that's a whole can of worms. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think physical theater has existed. It's when, when we talk about it, when you ask like that, then I come back to the first thing that all theater is physical. Um, so, but I, I think that people have been imitating the world around them through their body movement and creating performance out of it since before we could talk. Um, and so the, the, so, the, so, so the first physical theater is like just that it's expressing yourself through your movement. So then it and was very popular. At it that it time. was very popular at that time. <laughs> so I guess maybe it has lost popularity, but I don't know. It, it also feels like there's been a, a a resurgence of physical theater in the last 50 years. With How do you think that affects on society that it, that it has lost on popularity? Oh. Well, um, I think that we uh, pay attention less to how we feel in our bodies and how we express with our whole self and we listen to each other 
less Do um, we become less attached to another or what um woo you're getting into it now um <laughs> i i think we have a, a crisis of disconnection from our bodies and the earth and each other if, if you want to know my real if you want to know my real thoughts that's mm -hmm. i think we I think we have like literally a, a crisis of disconnection from from our own sensation and from our ability to feel uh, each other and the nature around us. Yeah, I, I think so too. What do, what do you did we ever have had a connection? You think? Yeah, I think so. Okay. What What do you think? Where Where this is leading us? Being more and more disconnected. Well, I think we're big. I think. I mean, we're destroying the environment that sustains us, and that's, I think, a, a, a profound act of of in, insanity. Like, uh, you made a nice theater piece about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to tell us something about the theater piece? Uh, sure. I could do that. Um, we, I made a theater piece with uh, my partner Leonie Baker, and um, what's your theater? Yeah. <laughs> Who is currently in the house? On Leon, the couch? You, do you want to do you want to join the stage? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> because Leonie is with uh, with us today <laughs> in the audience. Yes, please. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> any any questions so far? There was no no bell. I was so afraid of the bell. No questions. Thank you. No one heard that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hello, 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 uh, Leonie. Hi. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you are here. Um, yes. Do you want you to? Do you want you? T I don't get the English sentence. Can <laughs> What do you want to ask? <laughs> <laughs> you can say it in German as well. Hi, Le <laughs> Hi, Lynn. What is your part in the theater piece? Um, well, it's a duo show, um, so I am playing a elfish fantastical creature that is the companion of Peter's character, which is a wizard. So the wizard and the elf. Yeah. W what's the name of his character? His character is called Bernhardt, the great wizard Bernhardt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not a typical name for a wizard, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, it's. Uh, I don't know how we came upon it, but it is, uh, yeah, it's an unusual name for a wizard. Um, he has a lot of, I guess the wizard has a lot of passion in him. <laughs> he, he really and wants Bernhard to save the world. Bernhard is a very passionate name. <laughs> <laughs> he burns, he burns. Yeah, yeah, burn, burn hard. Burn and hard. <laughs> burn and hard. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the, was this the idea? Yeah, somehow. Somehow. Yes, ah, it was. It wasn't. <laughs> he just figured out. Well, <laughs> it's funny. It's <laughs> all of the decisions in the show tend to happen in a kind of strange dream state of process. <laughs> so uh, it's hard to reconstruct exactly how we came to that name um, because we were kind of going through many different possibilities, and we found the name that the character liked to say and that felt right for the character, and we also liked the liked this background meaning of the the burning heart of the character and also there's a lot so the theme of burning yeah. is strong in the show so well. to describe your show in three sentences what what would it be um i play a wizard who comes to save the world and fails <laughs> 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 yeah, that was one sentence. I come right, with. That, I come, that was one sentence. I come with. I come with my with 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 Pippa, my wonderful creature companion. Okay, I give you more. Okay, more a little sentences. bit more because you also play a very nice instrument. Both <laughs> of you, uh, you 
I don't know, made yourself most of it? The the wagon was made by someone called Kiki. <laughs> so why describe it? The people don't know you. They don't see you. What what kind of wagon? Why do you need a wagon? The It's well, a wizard wagon. It is a wizard wagon <laughs> because we are traveling through the realms, through the galaxies, from world to world. Can we have you two as guests and ask you? You mean you you want Bernhard and Pippa to come on the radio show? Yeah. Oh. You think they will do it? I think so. <laughs> will there be grass? <laughs> Or maybe. There will be grass, believe me. Oh. <laughs> on every show we have grass. <laughs> I'll make a chicken. Come on. <laughs> and we have chickens. He has grass and chickens. <laughs> Make a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> okay, Bernhard, what why what why you came to this planet? What what are your intentions for uh coming to this planet? Why did you come to this planet? Was it well, an accident? From no, from far away. Pippa could hear the nature. Pippa you could hear what? <laughs> It was the The sounds of the silence of the insects. No more buzzing. Yes, yes no more buzzing. buzzing. Stopped. Also here in the valley. I don't yes. know if you recognized. Very strange. Yes. Yes. And and you, from where you were, you heard that that the buzzing stopped, and that was what uh, made you. Oh, what's wrong there? We we have a look. Yes, it was a it was a very strange sound of silence from far away. And when you when you arrived. What what were what was your first impression? We found an epic mess. An <laughs> epic mess. Yes, the cutting and the digging and the dumping, <laughs> the breaking and the taking, the drilling and the spilling. So did you do something? It about was an epic mess. <laughs> it is an epic mess. Yes. Did you, did you do something about that? Yeah. Well, we went to speak to your people to find out why you're doing this. And what did they say to you? Many things. You have to see our show. <laughs> <laughs> We're not giving it away. <laughs> It's physical theater, didn't you hear? <laughs> we go from town to town, to pub to pub, just to tell the people what we saw. In which towns will you be next? <laughs> you know ah, we will be in Gutalona. Where is that? Uh, I don't know. Halle an der Saale. Yeah, somewhere near Halle. But it's ausverkauft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then uh, then I wish you to uh, a, a very nice trip to Halle an der Saale. It was nice that you were visiting us for a short moment. Pippa and Bernha Bernhard. Thank you. Hard. Yes. Thank you. Applause. Thank you. So, yes, applause for you too. <laughs> applause for Pippa. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we make we have to make a music break because we're talking for a long time. We make a short oh yes. music break. Our audience can join the toilet and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What? Yes. Oh, we have a question from the audience. Yes, please. Um, what do you mean about the audience can join the toilet? What are I the I toilets I doing? I and how I can I we I participate? I meant they, they can. <laughs> you will lead see it them there. <laughs> from they, they can go to the toilet <laughs> if they want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say short intercourse? No. <laughs> the answer is no. Break. <laughs> But everything will stay here, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> we hear a little music, and then we're back with Peter. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, this is a question for, um, sorry, what's your name again? Adam. Adam. Question for Adam. How's the interview going so far? <laughs> how, how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel quite fine. I think the interview is running quite good. Um, I, I loved uh, uh, the beautiful road that worked from uh, the over the physical theater to uh, um, the piece of uh, the piece of uh, Peter. Peter, yeah. 
um, and I'm very excited for the other two parts of the show. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mic drop. show everyone as a famous person would say um, we're still here with Peter Sweet we are recording uh, this time in the Wohnzimmer of the Paradies um, because uh, our audience enlarged so much we, we just need more space Oh yeah! <laughs> Silence, please. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, Peter, you t you told us about your play. Would you like us? A, uh, you you did a lot of other work. Would you Would you like uh, to tell us first, perhaps, uh, in short, what what other pieces, what other work uh, have you done? Sure, uh, I did a show that I toured for about sixteen years, called Meet Pete Sweet which was a clown show on a slack rope where I sang the song Minnie the Moocher 
um, by Cap Calloway on the rope. And I also rode a unicycle and juggled on a slack rope. Mm. And uh, so it was juggling and acrobatics and clown. And mm. this was kind of the show where I, I learned a lot about performing uh, from my heart and also developing a lot of skills with the audience and whatever. Would you do a little piece of from the song? I think Richard can play piano. Oh God! <laughs> I, how about I do it a cappella? Just you the can first do it line. A cappella. Sure. <laughs> 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 Folks, here's a story about Minnie the Moocher. She was a low down hoochie coochie. She was the roughest, toughest frail, but many had a heart as big as a whale. A hadi 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 Thank you. you awesome. You're welcome. Uh, you Radio did, uh, version of a physical theater play. There you, go. <laughs> uh, you did other, uh, other pieces? Too? Yes, I made another show called Boom with my dear friend David Posnanter, also known as David Posnick. What was that about? That was, uh, we played six characters. Um, it was kind of, it was a theater show about a circus. So between the two of us, we played six different characters in masks and we put on a whole circus show with live music and singing and slack wire and roussier acrobatics and juggling drums, ukulele, um, slapstick, mayhem. And then the last piece now is called, what is your last piece Foolish called? Doom. So um, Foolish Doom. The Boom was also directed by Matteo Destro, who's a wonderful mass maker and theater creator. We heard from Italy. that person in the show where Richard was in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Genius. Genius guy. So um, with Foolish Doom, I was feeling quite uh, disturbed by the state of the world. And um, I'd never made a piece of political theater before as part of my profession. I had in school, we, we did some uh, pieces in a theater style called Buffon, where uh, Buffons are like creatures that come from another world and or they come from this world, but they're somehow outside of the mainstream culture, and they they mock the the world, they mock the human society that they see. It's a form of satire. Um, and uh, I had the desire to do something about the. Uh, I mean, first it was really this the state of the world, the political, economic. Um, an environmental crisis that we're in at the moment. Um, I had the feeling that um, we're using more and more resources to create more and more barriers to keep out the people that shouldn't be somewhere and let the other people somewhere else uh, consume more and more. <laughs> well, I'm going to describe the state of the world in three sentences in this five-minute description. Okay, I, I, I'll cut to the chase. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't make another piece of art that didn't deal with this. There was a certain point where I felt like I need to use my voice to say what I'm feeling, and what I'm feeling is this. So like if a, if a singer has a broken heart, they don't write a happy song in that moment. They write a broken heart song. Mm. And I was, this was my broken heart piece that I wanted to make. Awesome. And so I... I contacted Matteo because I knew that he could help me to find a, a mask for this. He could help me to find a way to uh, transform my, uh, my impulse into poetry through, through movement and um, through the, the tools of physical theater. And uh, he said yes to, to work with me on this. And then uh, we were joined by Leonie Baker, my partner, and we found a, a theatrical language to talk about what we could see happening in the world. And uh, we did also a, a lot of research on the environmental crisis and also on the 
climate conversation, the different voices, what people are saying, what people want to do about the situation. Um, because we wanted to make a piece that wasn't just information that the world is in in uh, in an ecological crisis because everybody knows that we wanted to reflect the human perspectives that we see um, dealing with this subject. Was and it was it also because you felt helpless and uh, confronted with this situation? Well, I think I felt at a certain point like. Um, Maybe somewhere, but my, what, the, what I identified with was I felt quite powerful. Actually, I felt mm -hmm. like I have all this privilege. I, you know, I was raised by two professors. I traveled around the world when I was 13 years old. I've gone to theater conservatory and dance conservatory and circus school and performed around the world. And I'm a, a white man. <laughs> like I have so much privilege, and I want to use my voice to say something that I feel is important. And I don't know if it'll make a difference or what difference it'll make, but I feel like this is what I can do. And um, that uh, I, I want to try to create also a space for people to feel about what's happening and not just to be in this uh, YouTube news shock and then and then this like uh, internet social media uh, uh, bickering chaos, but actually come together in a live context where people are in one room and can see each other and can see me and see my partner and, and just sit down for a minute and feel what the fuck's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and I, I still don't know if we succeed in this, but uh, it, it felt like I, I, I couldn't do something else. So again, you're using physical theater to transport feelings? Yes. I, I, I think often of live theater that my job is to help people to remember to feel. And mm -hmm. um, and then, then mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to remind myself as well. And so we do that together and we breathe together and let the, let the um, emotion that is transformed into poetry be transformed back into emotion and then uh, see where we are uh, mm -hmm. from there yeah uh, I, I don't want I want nothing to add uh, I have nothing to add uh, yeah I yeah feel the same way totally thank you Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That you use it. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, where, when you first told me about the idea, I, I, I thought more people should do it. Way more people address this problem. Make it loud that you can't annoy it anymore. Mm. Yeah, and when I saw it, uh, more, much more people should do it like you do. <laughs> yeah. Moving words, uh, coming back to the line. Um, you also teach. Yeah. I yeah. teach and What direct. Teach? Um, I teach physical theater. <laughs> <laughs> How did this come? <laughs> and, and, um, I teach are, are there any questions uh, in the audience no. about physical theater? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Sorry, just clarification. What is physical theater? <laughs> uh, so you don't have to answer that. <laughs> um. So I teach theater. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I teach. What, what do you teach? How? What are your techniques? Or what? Uh? <laughs> well, mostly physical theater. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Subgenre. Um, very physical. Uh, I, it's very similar to, but what I just said about performing in a way. I. I teach people to um, r remember to feel what's going on in their body and to start responding to the space and responding to each other um, through movement. And this is kind of the base of it because I feel like the inspiration that that the actor has to work with is the material of their own body and also their response to um, the 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 people and the space around them this is this is the base and then when, then when you get into styles and masks and technique then you find okay 
well, if I shifted the shape of my body um, and I start to play this character, how does this character respond to the other characters or respond to the space around them? And how do we create the space of the show that we want to create through our movement? Mm -hmm. um, so this, that's what I teach. It's, it's both, it's a one, one part mm -hmm. uh, like, Sen kind of sensational sensorial mm. feeling and one part um technical and rigorous uh something to, it's like it's like with a musician you have to learn how to play chords you have to learn the how to make the instrument or how to uh, allow the instrument to make the sound that you want how and to then have you the have right to, posture <laughs> and then you have to then you have to feel something and and transform it through those chords otherwise it's just technical so uh. For theater, it's very similar. You have technique and you have feeling. Put them together and you get art. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we learn something. <laughs> yeah. um, we we uh, also know you uh, do also... Uh, you're a great storyteller. Oh. <laughs> Thank <Do> you. It <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a leading compliment. <laughs> 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 Perhaps a little bit. Do you uh, what, uh, in your in your in your uh, in your play um, uh, Foolish Doom? The funny thing is, you you don't only play yourself, mm -hmm. or you yeah, you don't. Only, uh, I don't know it in English, but you also have characters. One character is right in front of us. It's uh, basically two objects. It's a, a, a teapot, and uh, what is the other thing? <laughs> How's it called? It's, I think it's a hot water bottle from the 1930s. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's correct. A, a metal, a medical, metal, metal, medical, a metal canister. It looks a little bit like a bed funnel, like a bed pan. Yeah, but the, the hole would be very small for a bed pan. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it would be difficult. And how? And uh, to describe it to the listeners, it's a it's an oval oval thing, like uh, as high as my hand, and as long as two of my hands. And the other thing is, is it's kind, kind of a, <laughs> okay. you've given yourself a difficult task here. <laughs> it's yeah, kind of I, a, yeah, I know, but that was that was the. Yeah. It's an underwater <laughs> boat, a, a small underwater boat. So it yeah, it's like a little a bit like an underwater <laughs> boat. A submarine. A submarine. A little, yeah, a little metal submarine you can use in your bed. And the other thing <laughs> is the old school teapot. And and what Peter did is he, he took the teapot and he turned it around, put it on the top of the bed pan, and he... Uh, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He... Well, you can't describe it, but it looks marvelous. It, it, looks, it, it, it looks really like a character. Perhaps yeah. we, ma we make a, we make another picture of it. Can you can you make a picture right now? Can you can you perform the? Yeah. We, we but it, it's we put it in it the show notes. Uh, you you can look at the picture. We need uh, we need Le we need Leonie for this also. Uh, only the top, only the two part uh, only to describe no, the whole we, thing. We, I think is to. But we're gonna take a picture. Then we need the we need the hands and the and the I for my. For the integrity of the puppet, I insist. If okay. we wanted to take a picture, okay. Can you do it in two minutes? With the, with, we can do it. Yeah. In okay. Two minutes. Let's go. So welcome everyone. Um, Peter and Leonie are now getting into the character position. They are discussing how they go in. Oh, some small checking in on publishing rights. Peter is uh, putting on his wizard robe. Uh, Adam is in the back holding his cigarette very poetically, cross-legged on a falling apart sofa. E Electro has brought his the camera ready. The puppet character preparing. Adam directing for lighting. Now this bedpan is about the size of a, of a big hand. If you hit a hand with a hammer, it would be about that size. Wine is being poured in front of me. Um, Creature is being created. Oh, and you can hear now the. Uh, the character's singing now. I think I'm in the photo. I need to make my way out of the photo. I find my way to a chair. And I found myself on the set. 
ready for the second half. Taking my taking my truth true place next to Adam. Adam, how's it going? Right now we're taking a picture. I, I've just described that. And I'm I'm as soon as they put it together, I'm quite amazed how alive this teapot is. Just to describe it, so Peter is manipulating the uh, the tea can upside down and the uh, bedpan. Leone is creating the arms, and I'm I'm in the photo again. I need to move again. I'll move to the other side. I'm describing it in the show. Um, you'll see me in the back of the photo. Electro Alf is fashion photography expert. It's funny how excited everyone is. It's, it's very quiet. Uh, there's a incredible tension in the room. And I think we're coming to the end and can come back to uh, the show, no? Adam? This will be cut, won't it? No? Well, anyone else listening in, in Salzburg, uh, I recently moved to Austria. Uh, if you want to get in touch, you can find me close to <laughs> Vienna. Uh, <laughs> I like long walks in the park. Uh, <laughs> my hand. How Hands are roughly the size of a bed bedpan. How can people find you? How can people find me? They can find me at fromtheplains.com. Uh, promotion. Does Peter also have a website? Uh, he does have a website. What is that? I think petersweet.com. We have to check, can double check with that? him. Um, petersweet, P E T E R S W E E T dot com. Dot com. Um, I, I can highly recommend, yeah, I can, I can recommend this man. As a human, buy him. <laughs> oh, he's back. I, I'm going to get off the stage now. Let uh, Electro Broad come back. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I think uh, that Richard did a much better job describing what happened uh, than me in my broken English. Now, Peter, do you have uh, a story for us you want to tell us in the audience? Sure, I can tell a story. Story time. I love stories. <laughs> we had a suggestion from the audience that I tell the story of when I met David Bowie and Amy Winehouse <laughs> but that would be a lie <laughs> amazing <laughs> um, yeah I, since time should I tell the story of the story um, <laughs> my first yeah Meta, meta yes um yeah, I, I've been performing for quite some years now a story written by Shel Silverstein called The Devil and Billy Markham. How did you come to that story? Um, the, the Monkey, who was previously mentioned as my first double act partner that I traveled around the world with, he did the sound and lights for another friend of ours who performed that piece in high school. Um, and uh, did a, a theater production of it. And in doing the technique, doing the lights for for our friend Adam, the monkey learned the the piece, this section of it, this one story. It's mm -hmm. a longer story. There's several stories of the devil and Billy Markham. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then he would recite it for fun at parties. And uh, I learned it by listening to him recite it. And then the parts I didn't know, he taught me on a train ride through China in the middle of the night. So nice. it's so a it's a written story, but I learned it through an oral tradition. Awesome. Now let's hear that story. Okay. Well, the devil walked into lion bars on a rainy Nashville night where the lost souls sat and they sipped their soup in the sickly yellow neon light. And the devil, he glanced around the room and he got down on one knee and he said, Is there one among you scum who's gonna roll some dice with me? Whew! Well, Billy, he just turns away. He's pretending not to hear. And Frank, he says, no thanks, I'll pass. And has another sip of beer. Jamie just 
shakes his head, is pretending not to hear, and scribbles on a dirty napkin a song he sure is going to sell. And Benny, he's a whispering low to the snuff queen clutching his sleeve. And somebody coughs. <coughs> and the devil, he scoffs. And he turns on his heels to leave. When, hold on, comes a voice from the back of the room. Now, before you walk out that door, if you're looking for some action, friend, I've rolled some dice before. And there stood Billy Markham. He'd been on the scene for years, writing all them raunchy songs that the town just didn't want to hear. He'd been cut and bled a thousand times, and his eyes were wise and sad. And all of his songs were the songs of the street. And all of his luck was bad. I know you, said Billy Martin, from many a dark and a funky place. But always you spoke with a different voice or wore a different face. And I've struggled here on Music Row with the hustlers and the hacks and the whores, but my debts are paid, so I ain't afraid to roll them dice of yours. Well, then you get down, said the devil, and you put your guitar away, and you take my dice in your luckless hands, and I'm going to show you how my game is played. You see, you get one roll, and you bet your soul. And if you roll a 13, <laughs> you win. And then all of the joys of flesh and gold are yours to taste and spend. But if that 13 don't come up, well, you can kiss your ass goodbye. And you can will your useless bones to God. Because your goddamn soul, it's mine. 13, said Billy Markham. I've played in tougher games. I've loved ambitious women. I've rode on wheelless trains. But I will say, before I make my play, that if I should chance to lose, well, I will my guitar to some luckless star who's going to play some honest blues. Who ain't afraid to say the words like shit or damn or fuck. And who ain't afraid to lay his ass on the stage where he makes his bucks. But if he should play my guitar safe and sing some sugary lies, why, I'll haunt his ass till we meet in hell. Now let's roll some fucking dice. And Billy took the devil's dice in his hands, and the dice were heavy as stones. Well, they should be, said the devil. They're carved out of Jesus' bones. And Billy rolled the dice in his hands, and the dice, they had no spots. Sorry, <laughs> said the devil. Them's the only ones I've got. Well, shit, said Billy Markham. I don't mean to bitch, but I never thought I'd stake my role in a sucker's game like this. 
Well, then you walk off. Ain't nobody tying you down. Walk off where, said Billy Markham. This here's the only game in town. So Billy took the devil's dice in his hands and he called out, Come on, 13! And he rolled the dice and it came out. Well, blank. You lose, said the devil. But I will say before we go our way that I do like your style. For after all of the fools who I've played and I've beat, you're the first who's lost with a smile. Well, said Billy Markham. Those odds weren't too damn bad. After 13 years on Music Row, that was the best damn chance I had. And the devil took Billy under his coat and they walked out of Lion Ball's door. Just leaving Billy's old guitar lying there on the sawdust floor. And if you go around to line bars, you can see it there today. It's hanging on a rusty nail on a wall of peeling gray. That's Billy Markham's old guitar that nobody dares to play. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what, what, what do you say? <laughs> I have to improve my English. <laughs> There are so many nuances I didn't get and probably left them on what to catch them. <laughs> But we have it on the radio and on the internet so we can listen to it again. Luckily. <laughs> <laughs> I've never performed it as a purely audio adventure before. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it, it will come out very <laughs> fine. Um, we want to get... Uh, you need Anyone needs another break? No. no Good. Right. Any questions from the audience? <laughs> Any questions from the audience? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, how could I know? <laughs> uh, Peter, did you ever consider working as uh, with a voice, as voice actor, not doing physical theater? Um, well, funny you should ask. <laughs> um, I've, I'm planning to have two, two pet projects. One is a, a podcast, um, and the other one is Wizard Radio. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm very interested in, in creating uh, sound adventures and uh, audio content, because I do like to work with voice. I, I'm thinking if... You want the every fifth Wednesday? <laughs> every fifth Wednesday? Every fifth Wednesday. Yeah, in, the it, month. in the month. No, it's more than twice a year. I think it's four. <laughs> That is a very no, uh, no, strange every, every demarcation no, of time. <laughs> every fifth Wednesday in the month. No, every time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. I will have questions about this Wednesday thing. Every fifth Wednesday in a month. Any other question? Uh, yes. yes. Every. How many? Wednesday. How many Wednesdays? Um, I, I think four. I think I'm going to need to talk to my lawyer before I agree to anything. <laughs> no, I would love to do something. I don't know what you're asking me to do, but it sounds fun. <laughs> We You're we can talk later. We can talk later. We can okay. talk later. <laughs> no, I don't know. We we skip the Wednesday thing. Yeah, now. let's move on from the Wednesday <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, Peter, 
We are a music show. Sometimes we are not such a music show. Normally we are a music show. Um, what kind of music do you hear? Uh, what kind of music do I do I enjoy listening to? Yeah. Lots and lots of different kinds. Um, I, I, there's few genres that I don't enjoy. So most in most genres, there's at least some music that I will enjoy. I listen to a lot of uh, jazz, blues, funk, hip hop, rock. Um, and folk you and some classical do you play an instrument yeah I play drums and I sing and I play the wizard wagon <laughs> <laughs> you, you but you're probably you're <laughs> the only person in the world who plays the wi wizard wagon currently I am I'm the world <laughs> expert on wizard wagoning yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> Although I think it's going to be a craze, I think it's going to take off. If anybody wants to spend the the months building a wagon like this, they would probably enjoy it. It's pretty fun. What was the last thing you invented? The last, uh, the wizard wagon for sure was the Again, last. Again, wizard wagon. The wiz <laughs> The last thing. The last thing. You mean the last like <laughs> object? The last instrument? Thing is a big category. The Whatever. It could be a meal. Or a, a meal or a wizard wagon the wizard wagon yeah, yeah. you can go with wizard wagon it's fine i would go with wizard wagon it's a good answer <laughs> 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 um uh, let's say uh, from uh, tomorrow on uh, the internet will not work anymore uh-huh what would you do today it'll never work again no. from tomorrow on no. what would it. i do to get today um, t take a walk, eat some good food, jam with my friends. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what, what, I'd play what? the wizard wagon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your life. Actually, I might take it apart because we have to travel soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your life also won't change if there is no internet. M my life would, for sure, change. I think everybody's life would change if there was no internet. Mine definitely included um but most of my work is analog so i mostly have to kind of convince myself to interact with the internet in an active way i don't think i've posted this year anything um maybe something in january but Oh. <laughs> um, I, I'm 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 kind of proud and also kind of horrified because I, I think it's important to communicate with this medium at the moment mm -hmm. to bring my work to the world and to connect with with people in the way that you can. But I much prefer to connect pe with people live. Uh, in so if I didn't have the internet, I would go and talk to people directly. <laughs> <laughs> so which is what I prefer. Um it would talk be to, it would be a talk to the Wikipedia it would, directly. Be a bummer, it would be a bummer to not have as easy access to my friends, but I would probably use the telephone and the, my friend Lewis has a sailboat. Um maybe he would come and visit me. <laughs> I guess you can't sell to Berlin, but <laughs> so uh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Every, everything good um so um let's imagine you have a time machine okay yeah. you go uh uh into the time machine and for one year mm -hmm. you can go every when and everywhere you want but you only have one trip where do you go and you have to stay one year yeah and what i say one year yeah yeah and then i can come back yeah When and where you automatically come back. But when and where do you go with the time machine? In future or history? I guess I don't have too much time to think. We're on the radio here. I gotta get I gotta just say it. Um I would I would go um to like Uh, I would go to Africa e in the time before large cities. Wow, what? Why that? 
I think there would be a lot of cool bugs. <laughs> bugs. Um, I, I would love to see the. I would love to see the 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 what nature looked like uh -huh. before any civilization before human um, impact. I mean, there was human impact already because humans. And I would love to see also how the humans were living and how they were how they were interacting with. Uh, with each other and with nature in a completely pre pre city world so in other words there would only be uh, uh, small small groups of humans moving around uh -huh. i'd be interested to see the humans and i'd be interested to see the the bugs and the, the <laughs> fauna probably maybe it would be even before some of the large large fauna was destroyed so not like not like dinosaur time but just mm -hmm. like you know Uh -huh. So interested Wait. in the past. Um, what What are your idols? Do you have any idols or mention where uh, or mention or humans uh, where you say you uh, admire them? Humans, yeah. Um, oh, Leonard Cohen. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I admire Leonard Cohen. Why? Um, because I feel like he 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 played the hand that he had through his whole life. So in other words, he he allowed um, his art to change and grow and develop in each stage of his life. And the, the music that he put out in the last years of his life was absolutely brilliant. And also the music that he made when he was young was, was brilliant. So I admire that he was amazing, but a lot of people are, make great art, but not that many people manage to keep making great art and let go of what they can't do in order to embrace what they can do in in each moment all the way till till death okay wow um i want a dog um What what was the last uh, lecture you learned? That I listened to? You learned. The last le le lesson last you lesson learned. Lesson you learned. Oh, the last lesson that I learned. Um, listen to my partner on stage. <laughs> <laughs> was it yesterday? <laughs> I learned it over and over again. Um, but I learned it yesterday also. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, you can uh, you can switch uh, for one day. Uh, you can switch with Elon Musk. You have a lot of rockets. You have a lot of batteries. You have a lot of money. What? I don't have to be him. No, you just oh. for one day. <laughs> for one day, you have everything he owns. For what one day. Yeah, for one day. What would you do? What would you decide? <laughs> Or you can decide to Golly don't. I would. I would to not decide. I would. I would call at least five of my best friends to talk about it for a while before I made any decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I would call my mother. I would call David Posnick. <laughs> I would call my sister. <laughs> um, I would call David Birnbaum and I would Good call decision. Lewis. And I would call Leone. And we would have a chat about what's the best impact I could do with 24 hours of Elon Musk's power. Because I really don't think he's doing a very good job with it, uh, but I don't know how to do something good in that short amount of time with that amount of power. Well, you're the first person answering uh, I need to ask friends because it's a high responsibility. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, and Giovanni. I would call Giovanni also, for sure. <laughs> He should also <laughs> do that, I think. Um, when did you do something... Uh, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Uh, I came on your radio show. Damn, I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> besides, besides coming on that radio show. Besides coming on that radio show, the last time I did something for the first time. Um, I moved into a flat with my girlfriend. 
where. <laughs> Sorry, maybe that doesn't sound like a big deal to you. It was a big deal to me. <laughs> I'm a Rolling Stone man. I've been traveling the world for like 50 years. <laughs> I stayed in one place for more than a year. <laughs> I think as a as an artist, uh, t- touring artist, developing home is uh, quite quite a task for us in some moments so but it's nice to hear you found a home yeah (laughs) 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 nice Um. we have mice but (laughs) we're working but she's really good at catching them with bowls it's amazing (laughs) anyway sorry i digress (laughs) um <clears throat> you said uh, wh- you came from California. What was the city? Berkeley. Berkeley. What is the Wahrzeichen? Uh, the uh, the wa- the mascot? The 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 ethos? The reputation? What? Uh, throw me a bone. Language uh, gap. Uh, the, the, the of Paris, it's the Eiffel Tower. What is it in? Oh, the symbol. Well, the the interestingly enough, the the animal is the the bear. Well, I guess that's just the mascot of the university. I'm looking more for something like a building. Oh, a building. Um, the Campanile <laughs> is a um an old bell tower in in the center of the university that uh, is a very striking landmark. And it's very beautiful, um, and it's lit at night, so it's uh. Yeah, I remember going. It's very tall and has granite sides that go up. And if you lean your belly against it, you look up. It seems that you're lying on the ground. And then if you fall back, then it seems that you start to fly. And then you have to make sure not to land in the bushes. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know if this image works on the radio, but... (laughs) Now imagine on that high tower, uh, we we pay you a large sign that covers the whole tower, and you can write a sentence on that sign. What would be that sentence? <laughs> wow, you weren't kidding. This is the hard part, isn't it? Um, uh Gosh, it's like like a giant bumper sticker almost. Um, one sentence that I was going to write on the on the Campanile. Um. <laughs> the audience suggested suggestion from the audience your website. Your website. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I think it would just be um, fuck. Just fuck. Yeah, just yeah, fuck. With the just or without the just? Uh, 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 I guess probably God, everything that comes into my head sounds too much like a like a, a, a command, like I'm telling people what to do. <laughs> that's the, that's, <laughs> um, it, it, uh, it could be, I guess, um, I guess, <sighs> this is the hardest question you've asked me. <laughs> For me, the silence is always a reward. Take your time. Uh, Listen to life. Very nice. Very nice uh, last words. uh, Or not last. 
yeah, Richard said last words is not good in English. Last time, what do you say? Thank you, thank you for those uh, inspiring final words of you in the show. Thank you a lot for being in the show. Uh, thank the o I want to thank the audience uh, that it was here. Um, we are still here uh, on the Radio Fabrik uh, Salzburg. We come every fourth and fifth Wednesday in the month. <laughs> Um, if you want to visit our webpage, it is uh, riverflow.paradis.so, paradis with the IE in the end, or r double r dot paradis dot so. If you want to meet uh, Pete, you can do that on petersweet.com. Ah, again, a final thing I forgot. Peter, you have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have, we are collecting money for. Uh, peace now. Before that, we collected money for a thing. Now we have the thing. From the thing, uh, we have now money to produce a piece. And from that piece uh, <laughs> goes also a part in a ecological radical project. Now imagine you have 300 to 1,000 euros. What was what would be the most ecological radical thing to do if we sponsor that? With three hundred thousand, with three hundred to a thousand euros, we are not yet there. The next one will oh, be more, but to 1, yeah, euros. only three hundred. Not three hundred thousand euros. The <laughs> the, <laughs> um, the ideas we have so far are, uh, I think, we had uh, buying sugar and putting it in tanks uh, from harvesters in Brazil. We had uh, something uh, to rescue uh, swamps because they are a great CO two. Uh, saver. Uh, we had what did we uh, uh, underwater plants? We had with Trailblazer. He suggested that the field at the. It w you were there. Um, and yeah, something like that. What what would your idea be? You have only three hundred to a thousand euros, and you want to invest them most radically to help the environment. Can I call my sister first? <laughs> <laughs> We can also give that question free to the audience. <laughs> Please. It's an open question. E and if you, as a listener, have a nice idea, please send it to radio.paradis.so. Yeah, to, um, to invest it in Foolish Doom, to uh, fund the show that's, that's trying to get funded, to, to spread the, uh, the message. Um, I find it very good. How much Very CO2 do you save with that? Oh, don't, don't start these questions. <laughs> uh, but no, it's important. It's important to to uh, to start these conversations through poetry and through art. Um, and it is. And it Peter is. and Leone are also doing the, uh, the the funding push and the work to try and get that funded, which is not easy easy work. Uh, so I think that's a, also a great cause to to put money into. Okay, we can put it on the list. Thank any, you, Richard. A, any. Any other any other ideas from the audience? What would be a radical project? No one. No one. Okay, we 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 think about that for a little while, and uh, we say good night. That was uh, Radio Riverflow with. Uh, I, I, the <coughs> The thought I had in my it, uh, sorry to interrupt you. No, please, You're the host. please, please, please. No. <laughs> But the, the th I had the thought, and she is Leonie is also chiming in my ear. Uh, rewilding, but I don't know a specific project. But this is the thing that that jumps to my mind, to, to our minds. We're in the in the ether together. Um, rewilding. Um, there's there's a general push by environmentalists in the movement called. Uh, 30 by 30, which is to protect um, 30% of the surface of the world by 2030. That is a good thing. You told me about that. Yeah. Uh, the thing that is most important for the natural world to recover is space and time to do that on its own. So rewilding is a way to give nature the possibility to 
put right what we have put wrong. Awesome closing words. Peter, I thank you a lot for being here and also Leonie and the audience, which we already... Yeah, audience. <laughs> okay. Let's see if that... Uh, yeah. I wish you a very good night and sweet dreams. Good night. Good night. Thank you for having us here at Paradis. Tramsis. Man fühlt sich plötzlich als Teil der Welt, als Teil des Seins, das Ich verschwindet. Und das kann sehr unheimlich sein, man das Gefühl hat, ich verliere mich. Aber es kann auch beglückend sein, dass man das Gefühl hat, jetzt bin ich da, wo ich hingehöre, ich bin ein Teil vom Ganzen. Listen to this. The Emperor wants to control outer space. Yoda wants to explore inner space. That's the fundamental difference between the good and the bad sides. What the fuck is the point of this anyway? The answer to that is 42. Eine Sendung der Let's Netzgemeinde. Der Chaos Talk. Technik, Web, Politik. Zu hören jeden vierten Mittwoch im Monat und als Podcast. Wir freuen uns über Feedback und Anregungen. Erreichbar unter spg.chaostreff.at und per Mail unter radio.chaostreff.at Beschwerden und Beschimpfungen schicken Sie bitte an Spam, Spam, beautifulspam at gmail.com.